John chapter 14, verses 1 to 7. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going, pre- uh, going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Hi, I'm Joya. (laughs) Um, But I feel like I know all of you really well. And um, yeah, I've been here 17 years. No, 18 years. 18 years. Sorry, I can't count either. Uh, I'm a teacher now, uh, not youth pastor. So I'm a teacher now um, in a local secondary school. So if anything of my talk today feels a little bit teachery, like a PowerPoint, a game, and some audience participation, I don't apologize, (laughs) because that is pretty much my day job. That is what I expect. So please participate. Also, just um, you would never believe that my two children, Eden and Eliana, uh, sing Our God is a Great Big God every day and do the actions every day. You wouldn't believe that. You'd think it was the first time they were hearing it. I think they were just overwhelmed that an entire church also knew that song. So we're going to play a little game, and it's, it's a short game, but I have got uh, someone coming up on the screen. No. Who is this? Put your hand up if you think you know, or just shout it out. Yeah, go on. Who is it? Kent. Oh, you're a genius. Okay, Clark Kent. Who is he also? Because you did say something else, didn't you? Superman. Superman, okay. Yes, he is. And I think I managed, I had to double check this, but it is the Superman that matches the Clark Kent, isn't it? Because there are so many. Um, Next one, please. Who is this? Who's this? Bruce Banner. Bruce Banner. Who is also... The Hulk. She got it right. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) The Hulk. They look so different, though. Okay, and last one. This guy. I know there are a few, but this guy. Anyone? No one knows. Spider-Man. But who is that? Peter Parker. Parker, But it is also Spider-Man. Yeah. So if you meet Peter Parker, you're actually beating... Oh, sorry, everything's turned off here. Bear with. If you meet Peter Parker, you also meet Spider-Man. If you meet Clark Kent, you're also actually meeting Superman. And if you meet Bruce Banner, almost forgot then, didn't I? You're meeting the Hulk. But they're so different, you know? Peter pa- like Clark Kent is an editor of a newspaper. And then you've got Superman, who's invincible. But Clark Kent doesn't look particularly invincible. Got Bruce Banner, pretty calm, kind of gets on with his own things. And then the Hulk, Hulk smash, he's pretty aggressive, isn't he? And then you've got Peter Parker, calm, weak, a bit weedy. And then Spider-Man, who jumps off buildings and trusts a little bit of spider web to do that. And his spidey senses. I don't think Peter Parker's got many spidey senses. Okay, yeah, he eventually does get them. I get. I know. Just go with it. (laughs) Before I have any Marvel people telling me that I got it wrong. (laughs) The thing is, the Man of Steel, but is Clark Kent. You don't get the same thing, do you? You get a whole set of different characteristics with these two characters, but it is not the case with Jesus and God. They are the same. In our passage that James read to us, Jesus reassures his friends that if they have seen him, they have seen the Father. Jesus is the full revelation of what God is like. If we say we want to know what God is really like, we need to look at Jesus because that's what he's like. In our reading, Jesus is trying to reassure his friends that even though he is leaving, he won't forget them. In fact, he is preparing 
a place for them in the place that he was going to. He was going to be with his father in heaven. He says that in his father's house, there are lots of rooms, and he's going to make a space for each one of us. That's pretty awesome. His friends, though, were concerned that they wouldn't know the way. Jesus replies, saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the way. But Jesus makes it really clear that they need to know him to know God. In fact, they shouldn't worry about knowing God because they know Jesus. Jesus is the truest likeness of God. So, I did say there would be audience participation. Let's put this into action. What do you think Jesus is like? What do you think Jesus is like? Like pretty calm? God is calm. What do you think Jesus is like? Very caring. God is very caring. What is Jesus like? Kind. God is kind. What is Jesus like? Merciful. God is merciful. I'm going to get all my steps today. Giving. Giving. Jesus is giving and God is giving. Anyone else? Patient. Patient. God is patient. Loving. Loving. God is loving. I love it. If you were, uh, if I spoke to you this morning, you have a card. Could you stand up with your card, please, and show it to the rest of the church? God is the way because Jesus is the way. God is gentle. Jesus is gentle. God is compassionate because Jesus is compassionate. God is forgiving because Jesus is forgiving. God is our saviour. Jesus is our saviour. God is kind. Jesus is kind. God is the truth because Jesus is the truth. God is patient because Jesus is patient. And all of these things are held together because he is love. God is love. Jesus is love. All of you guys have some uh, um, double-sided sticky tape on the back. Can you just take it off and then stick it to the cross? And Daisy, if you can reach, can you get yours at the top and just come over while I'm doing the next bit and just stick those to the cross, please? I didn't really think the height thing through, did I? (laughs) Thank you. Our passage starts with Jesus saying, do not let your hearts be troubled. He had just finished finished washing their feet and explained that he would be betrayed. They had received some tough news. From Jesus. I think their hearts were definitely troubled. But he picks this moment to explain where he's going and to give them hope they can be sure of. We, um, we have a three-year-old, and we also have a 20-month-old, but it feels like a blink of an eye that they were newborn, and Eliana was newborn, right in the thick of lockdown. And uh, we did all of the things, you know, we, I would say we read all the books, but if you've been a new parent, there is no time to read all of the books. So if you did read all the books when you were a new parent, I don't know how you did it. 
But we now have apps, right? So I did look at a lot of apps, and we try to do all the things to make them really, like, you know, confident, but also secure, and, like, for them to know that we love them, and all of those things. And yet, separation anxiety is still a thing, right? You can't close the door to the toilet anymore because they think you've gone completely. You can't go to put the bins out because they think they're not going to come back. Why does that still happen? And no matter what you do, whether it is that you do the sneak out, they'll never notice, they notice, and they hate you going out and that, that makes them feel bad. Or if you do the, right darling, I'm just gonna go downstairs, I'm gonna put the bin out and I'm gonna come back and they're already downstairs with you by the bin because they don't believe you're gonna come back. I don't get it. But it still seems to be the thing. They hate leaving, uh, seeing you leave. Each time, you have to reassure them again and again that we're just going to work. We're going to be back later. We're just going to the shops. We'll be back. We're just going to put the bin out. It's just downstairs. You can see me. I'm just going to get the car, whatever it is. And we have to remind them that they are safe and that they can trust us. Eliana even now says to me when I come home from work, Mummy, you're back. Like, that's a surprise. I'm like, I always come back. I feel like the disciples had some of this going on. They would feel settled around Jesus, but then question things. Feel settled again, and then question it again. And this occasion was no different. They were deeply troubled by some of the things that Jesus was revealing to them about being betrayed and having to leave. This is when he reveals that not only is he going to where he prepared a place for them, but he's been the way the whole time. He's been the way, the truth, and the life the whole time. That hasn't changed. He is the truth, and he's exactly what God is like. And they can trust him, and we can trust him. When I um, stopped being the youth worker, I was trying to work out how I told all the young people who are actually now all like in their 20s and some of them married, which makes me feel really old. But um, I was trying to tell them like, oh, you, this is, these are the reasons that you can trust Jesus. And, and I said, oh, what do you think? Like, what do you think? Why, why do you trust Jesus? And one standout comment from one of the young people was, because he's got the best track record of never letting you down. And I thought it would be important to share that. That might be important for someone to hear. We all have times when we receive news that troubles us. We only have to turn on the TV sometimes and we see stuff that troubles us. We're going to go through stuff where our hearts are troubled and yet in the middle of this, not after the situation, but in the middle, in the rubbish bit, Jesus wants to explain that he is the hope that we can have. I know that it isn't easy, and I'm looking about amongst my friends and knowing that it isn't easy in this season for you to hear that. And just like children with their parents, we get this anxiety, and we're not sure again. And it's in these moments that Jesus wants to reassure us and restore our hope all over again. And maybe it is every single day that you need Jesus to restore your hope. And I, sometimes that's me. Every day, I need him to restore my hope and remind me of what he is like. That he is hope. The hope that enables us to live every day, to hang on one more day, to keep going another day. The whole Bible is littered with stories of God's people forgetting what God is like or thinking the worst of him. And Jesus whispering in all through the Old Testament too, this is what I'm like. This is what I'm like. This is what I'm like. You thought this, but this is what I'm like. We hear Jesus saying so many times, you heard it said, but I say. Each story is like a signpost. I did it right. Okay, I was worried. <laughs> Each story is like a signpost to who Jesus is and what God is like. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for my 
beautiful church family who've been my family, my friends for so long. And I just want to lift up each one of these guys that are watching here today, but also online, Father. Would you, um, would you show them what you're like? Would you show them the bit that they need to know today to carry on one more day? To know that it's going to be okay when they go back to school? To know that it's going to be okay in that lesson with those students or that teacher or that person in that workplace or that situation? And I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just bless each, just each one of my friends here. In Jesus' name, amen.